I complain a lot about watches that are overpriced and not worth the hype. But today, let's talk about watches that are worth their price tag and even undervalued for how much watch you're getting. I'm going to order these from the most affordable to high end and let's get into it. So number one, Christopher Ward. And to me, Christopher Ward and value for money go hand in hand. Something I should say as well, everyone's outlook on luxury and what is luxury is different. So I know some people wouldn't consider Christopher Ward a luxury watch brand, but I personally would. I think when we get a little too deep into this watch collecting world, it is easy to forget that spending £1,000 or $1,000 on a watch is a lot of money for most people. I don't know about you, but for me, I have to have a good think before spending £1,000 or $1,000. It's a very special purchase for me to spend that much. When it comes to Christopher Ward, their watches are great, mechanical movements, they are finished beyond their price tag, and they have a price that I kind of need to think about before I pull the trigger. So for me, that's a luxury watch. Luxury disclaimer aside, I think there's two watches that really are worth their price tag, even go beyond their price tag, and that's the 12 and the Belcanto. Both of these are relatively newer watches for the brand and give us an insight into the direction Christopher Ward is heading towards. Looking at the 12, the first thing I personally noticed about these is the design language. The integrated bracelet, dodecagon bezel, really timeless, elevated, sporty. The finishing is also worth mentioning with these. So these have three different finishings on the case with sandblast surfaces, brushed and polished. The 12 costs £1,050 in stainless steel and just under £1,600 if you want the titanium. But we also quickly have to talk about the Belcanto. I think everyone has said everything that needs to be said with this one, but still, this is the most insanely priced chiming watch that money can buy. Unique design, unique functionality. There's a reason why everyone wants one of these. On the strap, the Belcanto is just over £3,000, which is really steep for the brand, but like... Come on, look at this. This is a luxury watch that is absolutely worth the price tag. Moving on to Oris. I really think I should talk about Oris more than I do. It's another one of those brands that I equate with value. I've been hands-on with a few of their models, but the one that stands out as well-priced luxury is the Aquis. They have a lot of Aquis models on the website right now, including the more premium ones with the new in-house movement, the Caliber 400. But if it was me and my money, I'd still be getting the tried and true original Aquis. I'd be getting the 41.5mm or the 39.5mm with the Salita SW200-1 base caliber. Once again, these feel more expensive than the price tag would suggest with the brushed and polished stainless steel surfaces, sunburst dial, 300 meters of water resistance, and an automatic movement. Get in! Now there is an Oris I have in right now that we need to talk about. The new IFL Oris Atlantis. And they're also today's fabulous video sponsors, so thank you so much to the team over at IFL. I feel like I say this every time, but it's true. I think this is my new favorite IFL drop, a watch that I love, hand-painted by the dial artists over at IFL. This is a celebration of the ocean's vast and unknown landscapes and the courage of deep sea explorers. This is the exact model I would buy in the 41.5 millimeters. The finishing is fantastic with the polished outer links on the bracelet, brush case, and listen to this. This is my favorite part about the Aquas. But the standout thing, the real reason to buy from IFL is of course the dial art. Bursts of blue and green, hand-painted depicting the underwater narrative of Atlantis. These have just been released today and they're super limited, only 50 available for 4,900 euros. And this limited edition comes with bonus stuff. So this comes in a specially designed watch roll, it comes with a watch loop, and my favorite part, a freaking robo toy watch stand. Yes, I love this. These are very, very limited. So if you are interested in one, click the link in my description, which will take you over to the IFL website and they'll know I sent you. I love IFL, I love what they're doing. I love partnering with them. So go check them out. Don't miss out if you do like these. Oh, my hair's in my eye. Okay, next, moving on up the price point and into quite a mainstream brand, Tudor. Now, Tudor has been over delivering for quite a while now and they're not stopping anytime soon, especially with the brand working towards more Medass approved models and investing in their materials and clasps. 
In my opinion, the watch that is most worth it in the Tudor catalog is the Black Bay 41mm released at Watches and Wonders 2023. Now, this watch isn't cheap, so to get it brand new it's £4,000, but you are getting the updated bracelet and clasp. I'd personally get the five link, definitely not a Jubilee bracelet with the T-Fit clasp giving on the fly micro adjustments. And we're now entering in-house movement territory, fitted with the MT5602-U automatic movement, giving you 70 hours of power reserve, cost certified, and Metas master chronometer. Absolutely worth the price tag. Okay, next is Omega. And I really think this is the brand that Tudor is aiming for with their upgrades but that's a story for another time. Honestly, with Omega, there are some watches that aren't worth their price tag anymore, and, and the price increases have been a bit much. Like the Speedmaster Sapphire, now retails for 7,500 pounds. I know everyone thinks I'm so cheap, but this is pretty punchy. 6,000 pounds, no arguments from me. Over 7,000 though. Ooh, <laughs> oh. The Omega watch that is way too affordable for how much it does, in my humble opinion, is the Seamaster Planet Ocean. So this is cheaper than the Speedmaster at 6,900 pounds, classic looking dive watch, 600 meters of water resistance, available in 43 and a half millimeters and 39 and a half millimeters, and fitted with the Omega Caliber 8900, which is quite the step up from the 8800 in say, the Seamaster Diver 300. People are sleeping on this one. Honestly, for me, I would take this over the Seamaster Diver 300 because of its size options. I prefer the three-link bracelet and the pops of orange. I actually just need to buck up and buy one of these. I've been talking about this watch for so long. Make it happen, Captain. Next, looking at Breitling, and I feel like Breitling is sometimes forgotten about in the enthusiast community, and it really shouldn't be. They have an important place in watch history and the shaping of the modern chronograph, and to this day remain fiercely independent in a landscape of conglomerates swallowing up heritage brands. When I think of the watches from them that are worth the money, it's either the Chronomat or the Super Ocean. Of course, the Navitimer is the icon of Breitling, and I would say it is very fairly priced as well, but what you get around £3,000 with the Super Ocean or the Chronomat is just... Actually, you know, let's just talk about the Chronomat, because I think I've talked about too many dive watches on this list. Sorry, Super Ocean lovers. The Super Ocean still is great. They are officially on this list, but I'm not going to talk about them or go in depth because it's been enough divers. Now, the Chronomat is Breitling's go anywhere, do anything offering that isn't trying to be an oyster perpetual. Really great looking, versatile watch that is so Breitling in design with the bezel and case shape. The one thing that pushes it over the edge for me is the President style bracelet. If it was me and my money, I'd be getting the Chronomat 36 in the mint green, stainless steel, 100 meters of water resistance, Breitling caliber 10 movement, freaking awesome watch. I really need to get one of these in to review. If there's anyone from Breitling watching this, moving on to the next brand, Cartier. This is a Brit Pierce video, so we all knew Cartier was going to come up at some point. This is that point. The Cartier watch that is most worth its price and one of the most predictable ones, but it's hyped for a reason, is the Santos de Cartier. This retails for £6,750 or about $7,500. And just look at this. One of the most timeless designs, it occupies the space between sporty and dressy. Very thin watch at just 8.8mm with an automatic in-house movement, the Caliber 1847MC. But the thing that really makes the Santos de Cartier stand out is the bracelet technology. With the smart link and quick switch system, which toollessly allows you to adjust or swap out the bracelet. This is a truly one-of-a-kind watch that is worth the hype. Looking at Rolex now, value and Rolex seem to be drifting further apart, in my humble opinion, with their price rises. For a long time, I've thought, even though Rolex is overhyped and hard to get, if you are able to get them at retail, they are very, very good value for money and how much watch you get and the level of finishing you get on their stainless steel. I know many people will disagree and I'll hear about it in the comments, I'm sure. But they're reliable with great case construction and you can feel the quality in your hands. But with the price rises we've been seeing, there's a few models I'd take off the list of being good value. I think I might surprise you guys here with 
what I think is the best value Rolex, which is a date just. And the more simple you keep it with the date just, so stainless steel, oyster bracelet, and domed bezel, the more value you see. But even though it does make for the best value, if it was me and my money, I'd still be getting fluted bezel, jubilee bracelet, the most iconic date just you can buy. The most iconic Rolex, really. These are so good. I would get the stainless steel mint green dial all day, or maybe even a Wimbledon. So date just costs between 6,400 pounds and 7,850 pounds in stainless steel 36 millimeters, depending on which model you get. But there is definitely that step up in quality, movement making, case construction. It is worth the money. Going up that next step in terms of price, let's talk about Chopar. Now I've been a real apologist of Chopar. I think they make fantastic watches and a lot of watch enthusiasts don't understand how important they are. So many watch enthusiasts write them off as being a jewelry brand when Chopar is huge in the movement space, namely with the caliber 196. One thing I love seeing is brands investing in their sports watches. So the Chopar Alpine Eagle needs a shout out here. I would personally recommend the 36 millimeters, which retails at 10,500 pounds, or the 41 millimeters, which is 13,300 pounds. And these are pricey. These aren't cheap, but hear me out here. I've tried this one on a couple of times and I was absolutely blown away by the build quality and just how it feels on the wrist. This has a very 1980s Genta-esque look to it, 100 meters of water resistance, and it is powered by the caliber 9.01-C movement made entirely in-house by Chopar. Even though that's my favorite, we also need to touch on the LUC models. So these models are the higher end of Chopar, and although they're not cheap, you get a lot for the money. We do not deserve what Chopar is giving us. Like, look at this. This is the LUC 1860 36 and a half millimeter dress watch. Fantastic guilloche, only 8.2 millimeters thick and uses their in-house LUC 9640 movement with two stacked barrels and cost certified for 22,700 pounds. It's not cheap, but I think it's fantastic value for how much watch you're getting. I can't afford it, <laughs> but I can appreciate it. All right, guys, I've been talking for so long. Is there any big watches I missed? Is there any awesome value for money, great luxury watches that you think should be on this list? Comment it down below. I love reading your comments and maybe someone will see it and look into the watch you suggest. Biggest thank you ever once again to IFL. Absolutely love partnering with them. Thank you for sponsoring my channel. Dream partnership. And make sure you go check out th their new Aquas, the Aquas Atlantis, limited to only 50 pieces. Don't miss out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And now let's thank the fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful Pope Tier patrons. You see these names on the screen? These are the fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful Pope Tier patrons who keep the lights on here at Gringa HQ. They support my work. Thank you so, so much, guys. I am blessed with the best patrons ever. I, I can't believe there's people who enjoy my work and want to keep supporting it. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you all to your patrons. Thank you to patrons who aren't patrons anymore and supported for a time. It all just blows me away. Yeah, I love this channel. I love talking watches. And I hope you guys keep enjoying the channel too. Okay, bye guys.